All right, everyone. Welcome back to part two of the Ronan Charizard 100k views special. What if Ash was born in Kalos? I gotta tell you, I didn't think that this video would blow up as quickly as it did, and uh, I'm very impressed with it. So, without further ado, let's get into part two and see where that cliffhanger ends up. We pick back up with Ash and his mom inside the house, nursing Absol, when they start hearing noises coming from the outside. They look outside, and it's the trainer from earlier, and this time, he's not alone. He's brought some friends with him, local trainers known to be somewhat of the enforcer type, and this does not bode well for Ash, because he knows that not only is this trainer and his Mian Shao a fighting type, but his little gang as well are all fighting type trainers. This puts Absol at a clear disadvantage. Ash's mom goes outside to try and talk some sense to them. Meanwhile, Ash is trying to think of what to do, and he considers trying to escape with Absol. Absol is extremely hurt, and it doesn't want to get back inside the Pokeball. So, Ash does the next best thing, and he tries to climb out of a window. But Absol isn't having it. It stands up. It's ready to battle. It's going to face these trainers. And it knows that it has a... And it knows that Ash has its back. It believes in the duo. Now it's just time for Ash to believe in them. It stares at Ash deeply and intensely, trying to let him know that they're in this together. Ash can't quite explain it, but he knows what Absol's thinking. And he says, all right, if you want to battle, then we'll battle. So they head outside. Outside, while Ash's mom is trying... To calm them down, this trainer and his group of friends have all had their Pokemon let out of their balls. There's a Mian Shao, a Machoke, a Hawlucha, and a Scrap. Then Ash comes busting through the door. The ringleader of the group says, Ah, there you are. We've come to pay you back for that humiliating defeat that you gave me earlier. We want to teach you that Absol doesn't belong. It's going to bring nothing but bad luck to our town. And by extension, if you're with it, then you need to go as well. Ash's mom tries to stand up for him, telling them that that's not fair. Ash is just a 10 year old boy. But Ash tells his mom to stop. They're not going to listen to reason. Ash says the only way that they're going to stop is if we manage to beat them in a battle. Deli turns to Ash and tells him that Absol is extremely hurt. The chances of them of winning are slim to none. And Ash clenches his fist and says, I know, but this is the only way we're going to be able to get rid of them. Meanwhile, at the other side of the town, in the Pokemon Restoration Lab, an alarm is going off. Somebody seems to have broken in, and Officer Jenny and the local police have all swarmed, but they haven't been able to find anybody. Meanwhile, in the shadows behind the research lab, someone is moving in the direction towards Ash's house. Back with Ash and Absol, they take their stand, and this group isn't going to pull any of their punches. They've made the decision to fight, and they're going to gang up on Absol as much as possible. Ash is still a new trainer, and him and Absol haven't had much time. The battle gets underway, and Absol, well, he is doing pretty well. It's managing to steer clear of most of the fighting type techniques and the fighting type moves, and this is frustrating the trainer, but all this movement is having a small side effect. Absol is starting to move slower because it's not fully healed and the fighting types are getting closer and closer to landing blows. Just then, just then, the group of fighting type Pokemon managed to corner Absol and all of them managed to gang up on it at once. They go in for an attack and as it gets ready to land, they're met with a massive head smash. The trainers can't believe it. A random Pokemon just jumped in to help. They look over and they see someone, but they don't know who it is. Ash turns to him and he knows exactly who it is. There stands the miner that gave Ash the fossil and his Pokemon, a Ramparados. He turns to Ash and he asks him if he is okay. Ash says, yeah, they were ganging up on my Absol and they want to get him out of town. The miner turns to them and says, so you have a problem with Absol being around here, do you? They say, Absol brings nothing but disaster. Why would we want something like that near our town? We've already had plenty of misfortunes with the mines running dry of fossils. So why would we want another thing to bring misfortune towards us? It needs to leave and so does the boy. The miner says you guys are a superstitious bunch. Just because you think the mines have run dry and we no longer can produce fossils doesn't mean that they have. They say, what do you mean? He says, look at this. And he pulls out a Pokeball. He says, I gave this boy a fossil many years ago and he took it to the museum and tried to have it resurrect just for the museum to tell him that it wasn't a fossil. But here I have the Pokeball and the Pokemon inside to prove it. They claim that the miner is lying. There's no way that this boy had a fossil. The miner tells him, yes, the mines haven't run dry. Matter of fact, how many of you have actually been to work in the newer parts of the mines? The trainers all go silent. The miner says, exactly. All you guys are doing is toiling away in the older parts of the mines, the parts that have run dry. But for some reason, the research lab is keeping us from the newer parts, claiming that the newer parts as well have run dry. 
just creating the illusion that the area is run dry. The group refuses to bleed the miner, and they order their fighting types to all get back up. They're going to charge in at this Craniodos and the Absol. The miner knows that Ash and him are still outnumbered, so he hands Ash the Pokeball, and he tells Ash, Listen, this will be kind of rough. This Pokemon hasn't had any human interaction yet, but it is your Pokemon. I gave you the fossil, and I gave you this fossil for a reason. I knew that the people at the research lab would try and hide it. This Pokemon you need to take care of. But we're going to need its help. Ash looks at the ball and he looks at the miner and he says, okay. He asks Absol if it's ready to battle. Absol struggles to stand back up, but it is ready to battle. Ash sends in his new Pokemon. Ash pulls out the Pokedex and it reads, Craniodos, the headbutt Pokemon. It was resurrected from an iron ball-like fossil. It downs preys with its headbutts. Ash says, a Craniodos. And he asks if this is the pre-evolution to the miner's Ramparados. And he says, yes, Craniodos is a rare fossil that is found in the Kalos region, normally native to the Sinnoh region. And for some reason, the Fossil Resurrection Lab has been suppressing fossils lately, especially the rare ones, not wanting anybody to have anything to do with them or knowing that their existence. They want the public to believe that the area has ran dry. Once I had heard that they had told you that the fossil wasn't an actual fossil, it was just a rock, I knew something was up. So I broke into the fossil resurrection lab, and sure enough, the fossil that I gave you had been resurrected, and it's this craniodos. But they do have bigger problems, as the group has ordered their fighting types to attack, but they are caught off guard by this craniodos. Even though it seems to be young, it is powerful, and it hasn't had much contact with the modern world. Even though it's at a type disadvantage, it doesn't let that stop. It rushes in full force, using headbutt after headbutt, just shotgunning each fighting type, putting them down one after another. The miner sees their opportunity. Even though the numbers are not in their advantage, the aggression of this Craniodos is going to give them a window. He orders his Ramparados to charge in, and Ash orders Absol to charge in. And with some creative tactics and a couple of well-placed Razor Winds, Absol is able to take down one of the fighting types. The Craniodos is so wild that two of the fighting types get taken down by it because they can't keep up with its sporadic movements. And the Miner and his Rampardos are able to take down the final fighting type. With that, the group is left with no active Pokemon. And it just so happens that as they're recalling them and they're making empty threats, Officer Jenny comes pulling up, wondering what is going on. Ash and his mom tell Officer Jenny what is going on, that they came here threatening Abyssal, and they came here threatening Ash as well. And as this information is being revealed, the group make their escape, running deep into the forest outside of Ash's house. Officer Jenny has no more time to question Ash, as she is going after this group. But now that the group is gone, and that things have calmed down, Ash has a couple of problems on his hand. First thing is Absol. It's collapsed from all the over-strenuous activity due to the battle, and he has to get it back inside so it can rest. But the other problem, Craniodos. Craniodos is charging about, headbutting trees, left and right, and Ash needs to wrangle it in. Ash turns to the miner and asks, what's the best way to handle a prehistoric Pokemon? The miner says, that's for you to figure out. Each one of them are different. It took me a while to handle Ramparados when it was a Craniodos, and it took a lot of patience, and I ended up taking a lot of headbutts in the process. Listen, I can't stay around here, because once they figured out that I was the one who broke into the resurrection lab, they're going to come looking for me. I'm going to have to get out of Ambert Town. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I hope that we'll see you again. With that, the miner and his Rampardos take their leave. Ash heads over to Craniodos, and it has been laying down tree after tree, just getting a feel for its new life. Ash approaches Craniodos, and he tries to get its attention, and oh boy, does he get its attention. Without warning, Craniodos just fires a headbutt in Ash's direction, coming at him full force knocking him back. Ash realizes this is going to be harder than what he thinks. And after a pursuit from Craniodos, Ash is finally able to trip it up and get it back inside of its Pokeball. He doesn't have time to play this game with it right now. Absol needs to get some rest. About a week passes and Absol is back up to full strength. It has decided to stay with Ash as it's grown attached to him. And Ash has grown attached to it. It's also become very, very loyal to Ash and does not stand any disrespect that is thrown his way. As a lot of the town's kids have begun to criticize Ash because of his choice of having an Absol. Ash just ignores it. He knows what they think about Absol isn't true. And though it does kind of get to Absol what they're saying, he has learned to let it roll off him because Ash has his back, and that's all that matters to it. Since Absol is fully healed, Ash makes the choice to try and work with Cranidos. It hasn't been unled out of its ball since the day that Ash got it back in its ball. 
and he knows that it not only is it going to be full of a lot of energy, but it's probably going to be pretty upset with being locked up for so long. So Ash and Epsil head to a clearing outside of the town. That way nobody's in the direct vicinity, and he has the opportunity to let Craniodos run free, and he can chase Ash and Absol until his heart's content, and he's tired out. So with that, he throws the ball, and Craniodos appears. Sure enough, the first person it goes after is Ash, and it just keeps charging. But this time, he has Absol to back him up. And Absol, being overprotective of Ash puts Craniodos down. Craniodos stands up, and he's not going to take this from Absol. He's never even seen a Pokemon like this before, being that it is prehistoric, and it's not going to take, so it repeatedly starts to attack Absol. But Absol, being faster, is able to dodge repeatedly, and this is angering Craniodos, and it just keeps firing headbutt after headbutt after headbutt after headbutt, but to no avail. Absol is able to counter and dodge each one, making Craniodos look kind of like a fool, and it's getting frustrated. With that, it charges up one final headbutt, but this one comes in a little bit faster than the previous ones. And then Ash pulls out his Pokedex, and he learns that this is not headbutt at all, but this is actually a move known as takedown. Though it is close, Absol is able to dodge it, and Craniodos just keeps running. Ash, thinking that it's just a joke, until he realizes that Craniodos doesn't look like it's coming back. He looks at Absol and says, we have to go after Craniodos right now. With that, the two go running after it. It just so happens that Craniodos is running in the direction of the mines, and what awaits them there is something that they didn't think they would see. It takes a while, but Ash and Absol have finally caught up to Craniodos, and when they get there, Craniodos is being attacked by some people in some brightly colored red suits. They're trying to wrangle Craniodos into a cage. They realize that it was the Pokemon that had escaped from the Fossil Resurrection Center. Once Ash realizes what's going on, him and Absol jump in. Ash isn't going to take this. Ash confronts these two people and tells them to get their hands off of his Craniodos. It belongs to him. They turn to Ash and they ask, what do you mean? He goes, that's my Pokemon. It was resurrected from a fossil that I found. And they said, oh, really? Well, it doesn't matter. We're taking it anyway. This rare Pokemon now belongs to us. Ash tells him, I don't think so. And he orders Absol to attack with the Razorwind. The Razorwind connects with one of them, knocking him back. The other grunt tells Ash that he just made a big mistake. And they both send out their Pokemon. A Hound Hour and a Sneasel. The two attack Absol. And luckily, Absol holds the advantage in speed, and it's able to regularly dodge them. But unfortunately, the two do have the numbers game, and it does eventually catch up with Absol. And he ends up taking an Ice Shard and a Flamethrower back to back. Meanwhile, while Absol is keeping the two Pokemon busy, Ash is fighting with the Grunts, trying to get his Craniodos free. But they refuse to let him near the cave. Absol can see this, and with all of his strength, fires a Razorwind at the direction of the Grunts. The Grunts see it coming, and they jump out of the way. The Razorwind ends up hitting the cage. It's not enough to break, but it's enough to crack the ball. Bars. Craniodos can see this, and he takes advantage, and he fires a takedown towards the bar, and he manages to shatter out. The grunts see that Craniodos is free, and they both order Weavile and Houndour to attack the Craniodos to put it down. Craniodos, even though it's strong and it's fast, can't dodge both of these two speed titans, and they both come in with blinding attacks, and it's first hit with an ice shard, taking the damage. Then, it's met with a bite from the Houndour. Even though it's tough. It's having trouble standing up. The damage that it took from those two attacks was basically point blank. Ash runs over and he stands in front of it. He won't let them cause any more damage to the Craniodos. Craniodos sees this and he's not going to take any more of this. He's tired of being pushed around by all of these people, by all these other Pokemon that he does not know. He stands back up and he begins to charge and he charges in with a blinding fury with a takedown toward the Houndour. This connects, knocking out the Hound Hour, but it does have a side effect. Because of all the recoil that Craniodos has been taking from the takedowns, it faints. Ash sees this and so do the Grunts. The Grunt with a Sneasel left orders it to rush in with a Night Slash, trying to hit the Craniodos and weaken it up for them to capture. Ash tells Absol to get in the way and to block, and Absol does. It uses its horn to push the Sneasel back, and then Ash orders a Razor Wind that connects with the Sneasel. This manages to knock it out. The two Grunts are standing there shaking. They didn't think that this random boy would be enough to put them down. They tell Ash that he hasn't seen the last of them, and they take off into the mine. Ash wants to give a pursuit, but Craniodos needs some attention, so he recalls it, and he runs into town to take it to Nurse Joy. Once Ash gets back into Amber Town, he heads to the Pokemon Center, and he immediately calls for Nurse Joy. Once she sees that Ash is there, he tells her that his Craniodos is in bad shape. She said, what do you mean, Craniodos? Ash lets it out of the ball. She goes, wow, I haven't seen one of those in forever. Where did you get this? He says, one of the miners that used to work in the mine gave me a fossil, and it was resurrected at the lab, but the lab tried to keep it a secret from me, but the miner managed to get it back for me. Nurse Joy says, so you're telling me that the Fossil Resurrection Center kept this Pokemon from you and they lied to you? And Ash says, yes. She goes, that's very odd, but right now we have to worry about Craniodos. So she takes it into the ER to work on it. 
While Ash is waiting for word on Craniodos, he decides to take a walk around the Pokemon Center. After all, this is the first time he's really been inside. He likes what he sees. It is very modern, and there are a lot of Pokemon that are inside that are being tend to. And you can see that there's a lot of happy trainers with their Pokemon. But then he notices one Pokemon in particular. It's in a tank of water at the back of the Pokemon Center. And it doesn't appear to have any trainers near it. Ash approaches it. And this Pokemon looks at Ash through the glass of the tank. And it just stares at him. Kind of like out of curiosity wondering about the trainer. Ash stares back for what seems to be an eternity. Then he hears his name over the PA system and he is told to go up front to meet with Nurse Joy. So Ash breaks eye contact with the Pokemon and he heads back up front. Once up front, he talks with Nurse Joy and he finds out that Craniodos only suffered minimum damage. She told him that most of it was just from the takedowns that Craniodos had been dishing out. Because the move takedown is still new to it, it hasn't quite adjusted its body to take the damage so it was taking more than it usually would have. Once you train with it a little bit more, it should come around and the damage should be minimum. Ash is relieved and he looks at Absol. Absol Absol looks back and they both nod. Nurse Joy tells Ash that Craniodos is going to have to remain here for a day or so. Just because she wants to keep an eye on it. Ash says, yeah, that's not a problem. I plan on staying here as well. He then says, Nurse Joy, I have a question. She says, what is it? He goes, that Pokemon in the glass tank at the back of the Pokemon Center. Who does it belong to? She turns to Ash. She goes, that one? Well, no one really. She tells Ash, there was a trainer here that it used to belong to. But after it got hurt really bad in a battle, the trainer just abandoned it because it didn't want to have to wait around for it to heal. So it's been here ever since. Ash says, really? She says, yeah. Ash asks how long it's been since it was left here. Nurse Joy says, it's been about a year. And all it does is just sit in that tank. And it just watches everyone on the outside. It never tries to escape. It just stays there. Ash says, that's odd. Have you tried to release it? Nurse Joy says, yes. But it refuses to go. We've given it the option to go several times. We don't want it to wait around for somebody that may not be coming back for it. Ash says, that's very, very sad. It seems like the trainer didn't really care for it. Nurse Joy agrees with him. She says, yeah, the trainer even left its Pokeball. I don't really have the heart to tell it that it's not coming back, but I think after a while, it kind of just figured it out. Ash doesn't like this, and seeing how he's got to wait for Craniodos, he decides that he's going to spend some time with his Pokemon in the case in the back. So the next couple of days, that's what he does. He spends time feeding it and playing with it through the glass. Nurse Joy finds this very odd because this Pokemon normally never has any type of interaction with humans. But for some reason, it seems to be interested in Ash. But she's not complaining because it's getting stimulation and it's showing some signs of life more than it has in the last year. After two days go by, Nurse Joy gives Ash the okay to take Craniodos home. When packing up, Ash goes to Craniodos and he asks if it's okay. After seeing the actions that Ash and Absol had done for Craniodos, it has decided to settle down a little bit. It's not as aggressive as it was, and it's more open to being with Ash. Ash presents it with the Pokeball and asks if it would like to go inside, giving it the option, just like he did with Absol. Craniodos is more open to this idea because Ash isn't forcing it like it was last time. So with that, Ash calls for it to return, and Craniodos goes back inside the bowl. Ash is ready to leave the Pokemon Center, but he's not going to get out of here without some more trouble. Those two that he met at the mines, they have now entered the center, and they are joined by someone else that's dressed similarly to them and these two are taking orders from this person. She is ordering them to find the Craniodos by any means necessary and they start ransacking the Pokemon Center. Nurse Joy confronts the trio and she demands that they leave the Pokemon Center. This is a place for healing of Pokemon not the destruction. The trio just ignore her and they move on. Ash knows exactly what's going on and he goes out to confront them. The two trainers that he had battled previously tell their boss that that is the trainer that managed to take the Craniodos from him. So if it's with anyone, it's with him. Their boss then steps forward and tells Ash, boy, hand over the prehistoric Pokemon now and no harm will come to anybody here. Ash looks at her and says, why would I hand over my Pokemon to you? I don't even know you and this Pokemon was a gift to me. She says, it's important for the research and the future of the Kalos region that we have the Pokemon. So hand it over or we're going to take it by force. Their boss decides to try the nice approach to start off with. She introduces herself as Mabel and she is one of the scientists from Team Flare, an organization bent on saving the Kalos region. For so they claim. And these two that Ash assaulted are her assistants. Ash tells her, assaulted? Those two were trying to steal my Pokemon. I was just defending it. She says, listen, how about if you just hand over the Craniodos? Then we can give you a different Pokemon. Something that's much more suitable to you. That's less aggressive. Ash, with vigor in his voice, says, no. Craniodos is my Pokemon. I refuse to hand them over to you. Mabel looks at Ash and says, well, I thought we could do this the easy way. But I guess we're going to have to do this the hard way. She orders the two grunts with her to send out their Houndour and their Sneasel. And she sends out her Pokemon. A Weavile. Ash thinks, great. Three on one. Absol can battle, but it's 
it's not going to be able to take all three. He goes, I can try Craniodos, but Craniodos doesn't quite listen yet. And if I let it out of its Pokeball, we may have a problem. Ash knows that he can't run. And Absol is ready to fight as it is growling aggressively towards the trio. It refuses to be pushed around and it refuses to let them push around its trainer. Ash looks down at Absol and asks if it's ready. Absol nods in approval and it takes its stance in front of Ash. The battle starts and the three Pokemon all attack simultaneously at Ash and Absol. Absol is quick, but it's not that quick. Weavall clearly has the speed advantage and it is able to cause some damage to Absol, giving Houndour and Sneasel the opportunity to catch up with it to cause even more damage. Ash doesn't like where this is going and he knows that he has no choice. He has to send in Craniodos, so he does so. And as soon as Craniodos is out, it becomes the center of the attention of the three Pokemon and their trainers. Craniodos looks at Ash and Ash tells Craniodos, listen, you remember these guys? They were trying to steal you. They wanted to put you in a cage. They want to cause harm to you and other Pokemon. We have to stop them here. Craniodos looks at Ash and looks at them. With the look of confidence in its face, turns towards the trio and it immediately gets aggressive, charging towards them. Ash didn't give it a command, but it seems to understand what Ash should have said. Ash says, well, at least it's on our side. He uses this time to go over to Absol to see if it's alright. Luckily, Absol hasn't sustained too much damage and it's able to get back into the fight. Craniodos and Absol do their best to push the three Pokemon back, but they are still outnumbered and raw power and speed isn't enough to counter three pokemon with speed and power ash knows he's at a disadvantage and he has no other options he doesn't know what to do he's still not that skilled of a trainer and with craniodos still just kind of attacking wildly and not really listening to his commands and him and Absol not really being in perfect sync yet, he doesn't really know what direction this is going to go. He feels like he's going to lose this one, and he feels like if he doesn't do something quick, he's going to lose Craniodos. Just then, Ash turns around. His back is to the tank of the Pokemon that he has been spending so much time with. He looks at it, and for some reason, this Pokemon doesn't look like its normal self. It actually seems to be angry, and Ash can see it on its face, and he doesn't know why. This Pokemon jumps out of the tank, and it takes its point in front of Ash. Ash looks at it, and he asks it, do you want a battle? Pokemon looks at Ash and says yes. Ash pulls out his Pokedex to get some information on the Pokemon. He doesn't even know what it is. And the Pokedex reads, Clauncher, the water gun Pokemon. They knock down flying prey by firing compressed water from their massive claws like shooting a pistol. Ash says, Clauncher, huh? So you're a water type. And then he goes over the moves. Clauncher's moveset is actually pretty impressive. I mean, after all, it did belong to a trainer before, so it had to have put some work. Ash looks at Clauncher and he says, all right then, let's try this. Use bubble beam. And Clauncher fires a bubble beam. And this bubble beam shoots out with rapid succession, and it makes full contact with the Weavile and the Houndour. This is enough force to put the Houndour down, knocking it out, but the Weavile is still able to stand up. Ash is impressed. This little Pokemon has a lot of power. He doesn't understand why its previous trainer left it here, but secretly, he's glad it did, because it is his ace in the hole right now. Craniodos stands back up, and so does Absol. These two are willing to work with Clauncher. Ash looks at Craniodos. He says, Craniodos, can you still battle? Craniodos nods, and he says, says, okay then Craniodos, use takedown. And Craniodos actually listens. Ash then orders a razor win from Absol, and he orders Clauncher to fire another bubble beam. The three moves connect with the Pokemon and knocking them back in their trainers. Mabel tells Ash he got a lucky break, but don't get too overconfident. She's going to come back for that Craniodos, and he won't get away with this. Next time she's bringing more men, and they will take all of his Pokemon by force. The Team Flare Scientist and the Grunts take off running. Ash then turns to his Pokemon, and he thanks both Absol and Craniodos for putting up a valiant effort. Craniodos is actually extremely happy. It likes the praise that it's getting for Ash, and it's super excited that it got a chance to use its power. Absol is also excited. It got the chance to battle and it was able to team up with Craniodos. Ash then turns to Clauncher, and he thanks it for its help. He didn't expect it to help. Clauncher looks at Ash and is making a fuss, squirming about like it wants Ash to pick it up. So Ash does, and even though this Pokemon is super powerful, it is super small. It can actually fit on Ash's shoulder. Nurse Joy comes over to Ash, and she says, Ash, I think Clauncher wants to join you on your journey. Ash says, my journey? She goes, yeah. Don't you want to challenge the Kalos League? Ash says, yeah. It seems like I'm never going to get out of this town. Every time I make the attempt to leave, something else happens. Something that's keeping me here. Nurse Joy says, listen, you have to stop waiting. And she tells Ash to hand her his Pokedex. So he does so. She disappears behind the counter for a second and then comes back. She goes, all right, you're fully official, registered with Clauncher as your Pokemon. And he says, what? She goes, yep. And she hands Clauncher his Pokeball. Ash says, Clauncher, is that true? You 
you want to come with me? Clauncher nods in approval. And Cranidos and Absol both nod as well. Ash is super excited. All of his Pokemon are healed, and he is determined to get out of Ambre Town. He wants to actually see the Kalos region, and he would like to start challenging the gyms. That is his hopes. And with that, he heads back to his house to inform his mom of what's going on. With her approval, Ash decides to set out that day. He's not waiting around any longer. He's going to make his way towards the first gym. But... Back at the mines, just like Mabel said, she would be returning to get Craniados. As she rallies a group of 10 plus Team Flare Grunts, she is going after Ash, and she is going to get that Craniados and the rest of his Pokemon by any means necessary. All right, you guys, and that's all we have for part two. What do you guys think about this unscripted format? I'm actually having a lot of fun with it because it allows me to click through the computer and just come up with things on the fly. And uh, I think it's very interesting of the team that we're forming for Ash. So now he has an Absol, he has a Craniados, and he has a Clauncher. Three Pokemon that he's never had and really haven't been showcased in the anime really all that much. So I think his Kalos adventures are shaping up to be one that's very interested. And what do you think about what's going on with Team Flare and in the mines? They are really trying to keep people out of there. What seems to be the reason for that? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys liked the video, please make sure to drop a like and share with your friends. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and it's really helping us in the channel growing. And also, if you guys want to chat with other people that have the same mentality as us, please go into the link below and join the Discord. There's tons of people in there that talk Pokemon 24-7 and they're all bouncing ideas off of each other trying to help grow our community. And with that, I'm Ronan Charizard, and I'll see you in the next video.